Does it really matter to you that your unsaved loved ones are dying and we're getting closer and closer to the end? Does it really concern you? They could die and go to hell. Even though you're a lover of Christ? Where's the anguish? Where are the tears? Where's the mourning? Where, where's the fasting? Closer than that? Does it matter about the Jerusalem that's in our own hearts? But one of the really sad things about this moment right now is that there are hundreds of you in this crowd who do not want your life to make a difference. All you want is to be liked. Maybe finish school, get a good job, find a husband or a wife, a nice house, a nice car, good vacations, grow old healthy, have a fun retirement, die easy, no hell. And that's all you want. And you don't give a rip whether your life counts on this earth for eternity. And that's a tragedy in the making. And I get 40 minutes to plead with you, don't buy it. With all my heart, I plead with you, don't buy that dream. I just want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want to carry this kind of a burden. I don't want to have to weep over my family anymore. I'm going to go take it by faith. You see, you, you, you either walk away and go back to your passivity and say, I'm just going to be an ordinary Christian and there's no such thing. No anguish, no fasting, no prayer, no brokenness. Let's just do it. Our so-called awakenings, our stirrings, last but a short time. And when the last, when the re short-lived revivings and awakenings come from the hand of God, they are so short-lived. And in those times, we promise God we'll never return to our passivity. But it's not long, it's just weeks or months and we're back and this time we slip further back into passivity than when we started. I speak from experience. And we say this time, oh God, you've touched me for life. I'll never be the same. And it's like fireworks. A loud bang and a lot of noise and then it dies. That's all the devil wants to do is get the fight out of you and kill it. So you won't labor in prayer anymore. You won't weep before God anymore. You can sit and watch television and your family go to hell. Whatever happened to anguish in the house of God? Whatever happened to anguish in the ministry? It's a word you don't hear in this pampered age. You don't hear it. Anguish means extreme pain and distress. The emotion so stirred that it becomes painful. Acute, deeply felt inner pain because of conditions about you, in you or around you. Anguish. Deep pain. Deep sorrow. Agony of God's heart. A true prayer life begins at the place of anguish, a place where lifetime decisions are made. You see, if you, you set your heart to pray, God's going to come and start sharing your heart, His heart with you. He's going to open up His heart, and I'll tell you, there's pain in His heart. But He sees, and so few to hear. He's going to show you the condition of His church. He's going to show you the conviction to your own heart, and he's going to ask you a question. What is it to you? What is it? 
Why didn't God use them in restoration? Why didn't they have a word? Because there was no sign of anguish. No weeping. Not a word of prayer. It's all ruin. If it has not been born by the Holy Spirit, where when you saw and heard of the ruin, and it drove you to your knees, took you down into a baptism of anguish where you began to pray and seek God. Then finally coming for street rallies here in the city and walk in the streets and then wind up on 42nd Street and see them selling a kind of heroin would kill you. Say, I've got the good stuff, it'll kill you. And I remember breaking down, and it didn't matter the crowds going by. I sat on a fire hydrant tape on the side of a building and wept. And I was in anguish. I was in anguish four blocks from here on Broadway, weeping and crying and wailing. I wasn't looking for a ministry. I wasn't looking to build a church. I was feeling God's pain for a lost city. And I've never had anything that's been any worse to God in my 50 years that wasn't born in agony. Never. Never. It's all been flesh otherwise. And all our projects, all our ministries, everything we do. Where are the Sunday school teachers that weep over kids they know are not hearing and they're going to hell? And I cry, oh God, where are the voices? Where are the people that cry out against them? Where are the praying people? And I say, God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Keep me on my knees. There's going to be no renewal, no revival, no awakening until we're willing to let him once again break us. God, that's what we desire.